And so Lobos will get a chance to try it one more time. That pass for Hummel, by the way, was incomplete, of course, out of the end zone. And so Ross will have one more chance. And they will line it up and go for two. A great T formation in the backfield. Larry Hill bows under the tee. Hand off to Maurice Stevens. Midway through the second quarter of play, Bo Ross clinging on to a 12 to 10 lead. And the handoff is to the fullback, and he'll win the race to the end zone. Touchdown, Cardinal. Three yard touchdown run by number 35. Steve on the carry, Steve Hodges, he started to cut back upfield. Had he done that, he would have been in trouble. And the kick is no good off to the right, and our score remains 16 for William Jewell, 12 for Sol Ross. Why was the success of the 1982 team so impactful? Well, you have to rewind a bit. In 1965, Coach David Slaughter's Lobos finished the regular season campaign with a perfect 10-0 and were the Lone Star Conference champions. This was not the springboard to years of Lobo success on the gridiron as the Lobos amassed a 63-83 and one record for the next 16 seasons. Well, you know, my first year there, the fall of 79, we went four and six, which doesn't seem like a real significant record, but, you know, they had been one and nine the previous year, so that, that represented a step forward. But in 1980, I think we thought we were going to be quite a bit better. But yet, after six games, we were two and four uh, out of the playoff hunt or the conference championship hunt. But of those four losses, three of them were by one point. Very, very close games could have gone either way. And then uh, I think the turning point of the, uh, of the program came the last three games of the 1980 season. Uh, we knocked off Austin College. It was uh, very highly ranked. And then we won our last two games after that. I think we finally started gelling and getting things together that uh, uh, helped us be more successful in the 81 and 82 years. And then we went into the 1981 season. Uh, a lot of players coming back, very high hopes. Well, 81 season was the, the best team I'd ever been on to that point, high school or college. Hadn't really been blessed to play a team that won that, that regular and that often. Uh, we were, uh, Austin College was ranked second in the nation. They had just come off of a, a very good year. We were ranked fourth in the nation in 1981. They were our rival. They were our rival. And I tell you something, uh, Austin College, those Austin College games is where we really came together as a team. Because the, the Sol Ross game was, was, was the game. I mean, that was, if we didn't beat Sol Ross, we weren't gonna beat anybody. It always came down to the end. I mean, it, it was be up, way up, and we, we could make a comeback, and we could be up, and it, it was just never over until the last possession. Honestly, uh, we, we should have won every game in 81. And, uh, I blame myself for it a little bit. Um, you know, we've got a chance when we're 8-0 and, and, and playing up in Sherman and they're 7-1. And, and We've got the ball last and we're down by three and uh, it's fourth and six on about the 40 yard line going in. And uh, I don't know why this sticks out, but I can remember it. The play call comes in and uh, it's a, without getting too technical, it's a down and in by the solo receiver and then we got a back slipping out of the backfield into the flats and up the sideline. We had not run that play all year. We just put it in that week. And our coaches must have seen something to know that that was the right call for the right time. They didn't make a whole lot of adjustments on defense. They gave you the same scheme just over and over and over again and they kept you know they kept bringing their strong safety down on the line of scrimmage and rushing the strong safety it left the flat wide open and i and i blame myself i, I didn't believe it uh, i was worried he's going to be covered they're getting a lot of pressure on me i won't be able to go to a second option 
And I remember as the play unfolds, I came off the first option, which is the halfback up the sideline, and I hit the dig route, I hit the down and in, and I actually completed, and we make a first down to keep the drive going. <laughs> it, if I throw the halfback rail, there's no one, there's no one, there's no one in the same zip code as him. He'll catch it, he'll backpedal in the end zone, we'll win the championship. And uh, it still haunts me. Two plays later, we come back to it. I throw it to him this time, but they recover quickly and they tackle him. And we try a field goal on the last play of the game and we miss it and we lose. We attempted field goals that day. And I don't remember us making any field goals, but if we would have made one, we would have won the game. It was unfortunate. We had a good field goal kicker, in my opinion that he was a quality kicker. But every time that it came time to kick, we had to kick into the wind. And we'd kick into the wind and the ball would be going up and going up, and all of a sudden they'd get ready to cross the crossbar and it'd just stall out and fall to the ground. The, the one thing I do recall is if we had to lose to anyone, I was glad we lost to the national champions ultimately. And there was something I, I was proud of that, that, that if we lost a game, it was to the best team out there. Lobos were able to scratch together a 9-1 and one season and miss the NAIA playoffs by one game. That season, the team was able to outscore its opponents 316-104, to and a whole new attitude was born in the Sol Ross Fieldhouse. Lobos were able to parlay their 1981 success on the field into a never before off-season excitement. The spring of 82, I think we're elated. You know, we're 91, we're co-champs. We got a lot of confidence going in, but some of us, myself included, that loss gnaws at you. And what could have been, and then, and then now what needs to be. And uh, I think there was a steely determination amongst our team that spring and that summer this is not going to happen again. We're, we're going to find a way to win every game. Well, I felt real confident in the guys that we had coming back. We had a number of guys who spent the summer in Sol Ross. And as a football coach, you want your players to be together. You want their best friends to be other team members. And they were doing it. Seemed like it gave everybody a, a a whole lot better perspective of where we could be and what we were, you know, com when you see what they do and how they advanced and how they did in the playoffs, you're thinking, hey, we're right there. A couple of things different, we're, we're going to be the team there. I think the mood uh, in the, in the certainly the spring of 82 and going into the summer of 82, uh, a lot of players uh, certainly made a commitment to get ready. I mean, we hit the weight room hard. Uh, worked out. Uh, a lot of the players stayed in the summer. Uh, you know, it was, I, I think the atmosphere, we knew we were going to be a pretty good football team again. We got close in 81. We wanted to get back there in 82. Uh, but it was going to take a pretty good team effort because we're going to have to replace a lot of those players that left in 81. The next season, I said, with most of the core coming back, that we should have a very good chance of uh, producing a, a very good team. You know, it was it it, it felt a lot to me, and, and just thinking back, man, it's, we we knew we were good from that last season in '81, and I just felt like even going through spring, uh, I don't think we had as many complaints. You know, going up a mountain, uh, it was one of those things where we felt like you know we're going to get this done, man, and so let's not leave it on the table and let's make sure we do what we need to do. So it just felt like we we. We had a little bit of a chip on our shoulder, and uh, we wanted to prove that we could get there. Yeah, you know, looking back on it, I couldn't believe that <clears throat> we had that many good players in Alpine, Texas at the same time. That's the feeling I get looking back on it after looking at their seasons uh, 10, 20 years, 30, 40 years ago, 40 years from then. It's just hard for me to believe that we were able to amass that many quality players at Sol Ross uh, compared to what you see now in the rest of the conference. It's just a miracle.
Charlie Nelson will hold, and Chris Zavala will snap the football back. Snap is down. The kick is up. It looks okay. That is the end of the first half with our score, William Jewell 16, Solos 15.